Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being with us today. We're really glad you're here. We pray our service will be a blessing to you. It is the 13th Sunday after Pentecost in our service today. We're going to look at the importance of listening to the Lord and taking him at his word. So we'll start with the singing of the first hymn. The words are projected for you to the front. If you'd like both words and music, they're printed for you on the insert in your bulletin. <coughs> We'll rise. We'll follow this morning the service of the word. If you'd like to follow in the hymnal, we're on page 38. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. 
For him a praise today will sing him 238. You may re, you may be seated. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. <clears throat> Let us pray. God of all power and might, you are the giver of all that is good. Help us to love you with all our hearts. Strengthen us in the one true faith. Provide us with all we need and keep us safe in your care. Give us true peace and comfort from the knowledge of the forgiveness of our sins and the assurance of your love. We pray this trusting that you will hear us because of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. <laughs> Our Old Testament lesson today is written in the third chapter of the book of Proverbs. We'll start with verse 5 and, and read selected verses. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Do not consider yourself wise. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then your body will be healed and your bones will be refreshed. How blessed is the person who finds wisdom, the person who acquires understanding, because the profit it gives is better than the profit from silver, and its yield is better than gold. It is more valuable than gems, and nothing you desire can equal it. In its right hand are the days of a long life. In its left hand are riches and honor. Its ways are pleasant ways, and all its paths are peace. It is a tree of life for those who hold on to it. Those who cling to it are blessed. This is the word of the Lord, the Old Testament lesson. We'll continue by singing Psalm 34. If you'd like to follow in the hymnal, we're on page 80.
Our epistle lesson today is written in the fifth chapter of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. We start with verse 15. Again, the reminder that we belong to the Lord. We are to live for him. Consider carefully then how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise people. Make the most of your time because the days are evil. For this reason, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk on wine, which causes you to lose control. Instead, be filled with the Spirit by speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music with your hearts to the Lord, by always giving thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by submitting to one another in reverence for Christ. This is the word of the Lord, the Old Testament, or the the epistle lesson. Alleluia. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Alleluia. We'll rise for the gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel is written in the seventh chapter of St. Mark. We start with the 31st verse. Jesus left the region of Tyre again and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee within the region of the Decapolis. They brought a man to him who was deaf and had a speech impediment. They pleaded with Jesus to place his hand on him. Jesus took him aside in private away from the crowd. He put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. After he looked up to heaven, he sighed and said, Ephetha, which means be opened. Immediately the man's ears were opened. His tongue was set free, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus gave the people strict orders to tell no one. But the more he did so, the more they kept proclaiming it. They were amazed beyond measure and said, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We'll continue with the next hymn.
will rise. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Amen. The words of God will consider on this, the 13th Sunday after Pentecost, are written in the 30th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. We start with verse 15. See now, today I have set before you life and prosperity, death and disaster. This is what I am commanding you today. Love the Lord your God. Walk in his ways and keep his commandments, his statutes, and his ordinances. Then you will live and increase in number, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are going to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you do not listen, and you are lured away, and you bow down to other gods and serve them, then I declare to you today that you will most certainly perish. You will not live a long life on the land that you are about to enter and possess by crossing over the Jordan. I call the heavens and the earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, a blessing and a curse. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live by loving the Lord your God, by listening to his voice, by clinging to him, because that means life for you. And you will live a long life on your land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is God's word. Please be seated. In the name of the Lord, who truly does love you and truly does want the best for you, Dear friends in Christ, you ever do that? You look at certain people and what they do, and you shake your head and think to yourself, why do they insist on learning things the hard way? I mean, there's times it's just so plain what a person should do or what they should not do. And you urge them to do what's plainly right and best, and oh, no, no, they're going to do it their way. And, well, sometimes there's consequences. They make a mess of things, and eventually, maybe they kind of come with their tail between their legs. Maybe I should have listened. The young couple, newly married, starting out, and you try to tell them, be careful how you use your credit cards. And I don't know if that happens to you. You get things in the mail, and you say, oh, I can get another credit card, and I get another credit card. You see something you want, you just pull out the plastic, and you get in the habit of doing that. You never learn to say no to yourself, thinking, no, I should save my money. Uh, the person, they just keep charging and charging and charging, and the next thing you know, they're deep in debt, and how do I get out of this? I guess I should have listened. How about students? Going away from home the first time to live in a dormitory. And maybe you try to tell them, you know, uh, especially if they're going after high school and they're 18. And you tell them, well, you, you know, you're going to have a lot of newfound freedom now, okay? You're not going to have mom and dad breathing down your neck, reminding you constantly of what you should or should not be doing. You might think, hey, good, now I can just do whatever I want. Have fun. And you try to tell them, you know, that's not why... You're going to school, you know. And then you try to tell them, and stay, stay up with your studies. Don't think that you can put it off. I'm going to have all the fun I can as long as I can, and when it gets close to the end of the term, I'll just pull a few all-nighters, I'll get it done, and it'll be fine. And then it doesn't quite work out. They flunk out, and maybe I should have listened. Okay? How many times you see people insist on learning things the hard way? Well, what about the Israelites in the Old Testament? 
It seems sometimes that they were bound and determined to learn things the hard way. The Lord plainly told them before they entered into the promised land, this is what I want you to do. He says you can either have blessings or you can bring hardship on yourself. And he tells him, if you turn away from me, if you disobey me, if you start following false gods, there is going to be troubles and hardships, painful things. If you have the chance to read Deuteronomy 28, ho, oh, does the Lord get graphic with the things that would happen to them if they would turn away from him and disobey him. And here he says, Today I have set before you life and prosperity, death or disaster. See, this is what it could be. Hmm? And this is what I am commanding you today. Love the Lord your God. Walk in his ways. Keep his commandments, statutes, and ordinances. Do what the Lord tells you to do. Then you will live and increase in number, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are going to, to possess. Follow God's way. Hmm? His way is right. His way is best. Listen to him. Do what he says. Then there will be blessings. And he tells them what the other choice will bring. Hmm? If your heart turns away and you do not listen and you are lured, lured away and you bow down to other gods and serve them, then I declare to you today that you will most certainly perish. He tells them plainly, this is what is going to happen and he basically says take my word for it hmm? his way is always right his way is always best and finally then he says I call the heavens and the earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death a blessing and a curse choose life so that you and your descendants may live by loving the Lord your God, by listening to his voice, by clinging to him. And then he sums it up, because that means life for you. Listen to the Lord. His way is right, his way is best. And of course, if you know your Old Testament, you know what happened. Hmm? It seems like the Israelites were bound and determined to go their own way. They were going to learn things the hard way. You read through the book of Judges. Things are okay, but then they turn away. They worship false gods, and, the, and trouble comes to them. Other nations start causing them grief. They turn to the Lord, call out to him. He delivers them, and oh, things are good for a while. And then they still don't get it. They repeat the cycle again. They turn away from him. They worship other gods and bring troubles. He said, why didn't they get it? And, of course, centuries later, yeah, they were turning away again, worshiping other gods, ignoring God's commandments, doing some pretty disgusting things. And finally, well, the Lord allowed the Assyrians to conquer the ten northern tribes. They were wiped out, basically never heard from again. The two southern tribes didn't learn from their mistakes and... The Lord allowed them to be captured by the Babylonians. Many of them were killed and they were dragged off into captivity for 70 years. Hmm? Interesting. What does Paul say in 1 Corinthians? Talking about the Old Testament Israelites. Now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Hmm? Learn from them. Mm -hmm. Take the Lord at his word. He doesn't want you to have troubles and hardships in your life. He doesn't want you to bring all kinds of heartache on yourself. He wants you to be blessed, so he wants you to listen to him and follow his way. He tells you what happens if you don't and basically says, take my word for it. My way is always right. My way is always best. And again, people can read the Old Testament. Uh, they can look at other things in history. 
where, again, how many times does it improve what the Bible says is really true, and yet they don't listen? And, and why is that? Well, people have the sinful nature inside of them. And the sinful nature wants to convince them that, no, there are other ways to live. No, you don't have to do everything the Bible says. It tries to tell you those are old-fashioned values. Times have changed. Uh, we're smarter now. We've learned, and so we can do things differently. And then the temptation is there to look at other people who are not following the Lord. And at first glance, sometimes it seems like maybe they have more in this life than we do. They have more fun. Maybe they have more money. They have more things. Uh, they're having more good times. And, and it seems like nothing is really happening to them. Why can't we be like them? And the temptation is then to give in. Hmm. And you know, maybe not always right away, but you turn away from the Lord and there's, there's troubles and problems. If you follow the sinful nature, you're going to learn the hard way. And there will be pain and trouble. Again, maybe not right away, but sin always ends up hurting you. And the Lord doesn't want you to bring trouble and hardship on yourself. He loves you. He wants you to be blessed. So he tells you, listen to me. Listen to what I'm telling you. Take my word for it. My way is always right. My way is always best. But doing that, doing that requires basically three things. Trusting him, right? We read about it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, regardless of what your earthly mind might say. Again, we're smarter than they were in years gone by, or we've learned new things, or times have changed. Others are doing it. It doesn't matter what I think. What matters is what God says. I'm to take his word for it when he tells me something. That's trusting him. Then being humble before him. Again, Proverbs 3, in all your ways, Submit to him. Hmm? Uh, give in to what he wants. And again, the sinful nature doesn't want to submit. It doesn't want to be told what to do. And there's times where I'm thinking that I want to prove that I'm my own person, that nobody tells me what to do, and I want to go my own way. Submit to him. Do what he says. Take his word for it. His way is right. His way is best. And finally then, of course, to look at everything in light of what he says in his word. That the more you know his word, then you can recognize, yeah, there's something not right about that. Or that's not what the Lord wants me to do. That's not what God says is right. You know it, and then humble yourself before him and trust his way is right, his way is best. And maybe we can apply that in, in, in a certain way here, especially with school starting again here shortly. And for some of us, too. You think back to children, younger children, as they grow. And depending on their lives and various circumstances, and we can maybe remember that in our own lives. When we're younger, growing up, we have a certain something. It's a very special blessing. It's called innocence. Not that we haven't ever sinned, but there are certain sins that we have not committed yet. And we keep in mind... Every sin makes us guilty before God. All sins are the same to God. But in this world, certain sins bring more heartache and troubles than others. When you're young and you have that innocence, there's a kind of guilt you've never had to deal with. There's a kind of shame you've never had to try to, again, to deal with. Uh, maybe you do something wrong and you're afraid you get punished, but 
It's done. It's over. You don't have to go through life thinking, oh, uh, how can I face people? I can't look at myself in the mirror now. Or looking over your shoulder, what's going to happen to me now because I did this? Those are wonderful blessings to have a clear conscience and to not have to deal with that kind of shame and guilt. And the devil wants to rob us of that. And again, thinking of our children, or we can maybe think of ourselves growing up. As you get older, there are more and more temptations the devil throws at us, right? When you think of children leaving grade school and going to high school and the temptations that are there, or going off to university, maybe away from home for the first time, and they have this newfound freedom, and they want to make friends, and they want to be accepted by friends, and uh, the friends may seem popular and smart, so maybe we should listen to them and do the things that they can do. Anything to get them to fall into various sins that will cause them to lose that innocence that will harm their relationship with God. And his goal ultimately is to get people to lose their faith, right? And we talk about this, those of you who have been in confirmation class, we talk about those three that especially the devil tries to use, and we'll add a couple more, but abusing alcohol, starting to use illegal drugs, falling into sexual sins, and then there's sometimes rebelling against authority, thinking I don't have to respect mom and dad anymore. I don't have to listen to teachers or anyone else. Or the thought, you know, I've been forced to go to church all my life. I don't need to make myself go anymore. I know what I believe. I don't have to do that. I can finally do what I want to on Sunday mornings and more. Anything to get people to fall into sin. And the devil doesn't want you to know beforehand the consequences that come when you do give in to sin. He wants you to think life will be better, this will be fun, you'll enjoy yourself, you'll be like others, you'll feel important like you're your own person. Um, and yet there are consequences. And again, Various things happen in different ways. Maybe not always right away. Maybe it's down the road. But there are times when it's almost immediate. What have I done? Oh, and you feel sick inside. Why did I do this? And suddenly, again, you deal with shame. And sometimes with embarrassment. And sometimes you look in the mirror and you're so angry at yourself for doing something so foolish. And then there's looking over your shoulder. Is, are they going to find out what I did? Or are there going to be other consequences? And then what does God think of me? Is he going to turn against me now? What's going to happen? And it can be awfully difficult to deal with. And that's why when it's so incredibly important, listen to the Lord, especially when you have fallen into a sin. Listen to him. And what does he say? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Take the Lord at his word. Your sins are forgiven. That means God is not angry at you. He doesn't hate you. Again, that sin might be part of you, but you let it go to him. It's part of your past. You give it to him. In the present now, you're God's forgiven child. His face still smiles at you because when he looks at you, he sees you covered in Jesus' righteousness. You're just what he wants. And each day you can put one foot in front of the other saying, I'm God's forgiven child. He loves me. He's going to help me. And sometimes in his wisdom, we might have to deal with consequences for our sin. 
They might last for months, even years. Some things make a mess, and for the rest of our lives, we have certain hardships. But even then, you know, God is still loving me. God is still helping me. He's still going to guide me. You think again of what Paul says in the New Testament. He says, we walk by faith, not by sight. And walking by faith means listening to the Lord, taking his word for it. When it comes to living life, this is what he says is right. This is what he says is wrong. If I follow his way, it may not always be easy. People might make fun of me. And sometimes, yeah, there are crosses to bear as you listen to him. But God knows, God's guides, God blesses. You do what he says is right. Things will go better. And you can go forward with a clear conscience, not being afraid of what's going to happen. If you refuse to listen, maybe some momentary pleasure. But sin always ends up hurting you. So we walk by faith, listening to him, knowing his way is always right. His way is always best. So you can, you can always take the Lord at his word. May God help us to do that. Amen. You may remain seated. And the peace of God would surpass us all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And we'll join in confessing our Christian faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed, we read, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue with the offering, and as we gather it, we'll sing the projected hymn verses.
You may remain seated. And this morning we're going to follow the prayer for the church for the season of Pentecost. It's projected for you to the front. If you want to follow in the hymnal, it's on page 127. O Lord our God, you are wise and powerful, good and gracious. Your mercies are new every morning. Each day you open your hand and provide for the needs of your children on earth. Strengthen your church in all the world. Let your comforting message of salvation in Christ Jesus be proclaimed to troubled souls everywhere. We bring you our requests for the various structures of society. Bless our national, state, and local governments. Grant prosperity to our businesses and industries. Give employers a sense of fairness toward their workers and employees a feeling of joy and pride in their workmanship. Invigorate the schools of our land. Give success to every effort that helps students read, think, and communicate in ways that will promote an informed and responsible citizenry. Arouse curious minds to discover the wonders of your created order. Strengthen the families of our country. Give fathers and mothers a renewed commitment to be good parents. Give children and young people the wisdom to regard their parents as your representatives. We offer two special prayers this morning, Lord. First of all, for our fellow member, Logan Stubbe, who is seriously injured at his work. We ask, Lord, that you would give him healing. Please, Lord, help the injury again to heal without infection and without long-term effects. Give him strength to endure the pain that, that comes. And again, help him always to look to you in faith, trusting that you love him, will help him, and will take care of him. Then, Lord, we think of schools starting up again, uh, especially we think of Great Plains Lutheran High School, which begins this afternoon, and our own Trinity Lutheran School, which begins this week on Tuesday. Please, Lord, grant your extra, extra special blessing. Please bless all who serve, especially our teachers. Give them an extra rich measure of wisdom and dedication, love for their students, and the ability to teach and bless all the students, help them to grow in knowledge, help them to grow in their bodies, and especially help them to grow in their souls and their faith. Help them to listen to God's word, take it to heart, believe it, and to follow it all their lives. Help us, Lord, to mold children so that they will grow up to be faithful students who will follow you all their lives. Hear us now, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Gracious Father, we pray boldly as Jesus taught with the confidence that you will hear and with the faith that you will respond for our welfare. And hear us now as we pray the prayer your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we'll continue with the next hymn. <clears throat>
We pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for your grace and mercy which has called us to be your children, which, yet, which sent your Son to be our Savior, and which has called us and brought us to saving faith. Thank you, Lord, for the comfort of knowing sins are forgiven, you love us always, and will indeed guide us through life. Please, Lord, help us to listen to you, to take you at your word, to be humble before you, and to trust that your way is indeed always right. So please, Lord, as we leave this house of worship, guide us, be with us, help us to follow you in your way, help us to do all things for your glory and for the benefit of others, and if it's your will, allow us to worship together again. We pray this to you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And we'll close with the final hymn. Good morning once again. Thank you for being with us today. We're really glad you're here. We pray our service was a blessing to you. A couple of things to point out to you. Again, this afternoon, opening service at Great Plains. Uh, Monday, we have back to school night starting at 5.30. And then Tuesday, we'll have our very first day. It's only a partial day, but that starts on Tuesday. And to interject, um, I have to go out of town to a, a district meeting Monday and Tuesday. I won't be back till Tuesday night. So Wednesday, on Wednesday when we have our first full day of school, it's that morning we'll have our opening service then. Okay? So, uh, regular start on Tuesday, part, partial day, Wednesday a full day, and that morning we have opening service. Uh, again, with, with school starting up, uh, Sometimes it's a struggle for some of the non-members to pay their tuition, so we do have tuition assistance, and we'd like to be able to help them if they need it. So 
As you prayerfully consider your offerings, perhaps you could consider something to the student aid fund so that we can help the families that are in need. Uh, you can see the note about chimes and the note for a school cook. Um, a week from today, we'll celebrate our 67th anniversary. We'll have a special service followed by a potluck meal, and it's going to serve as a kicked up kickoff for all the, all the things that are starting again this, this, well, late summer and fall. I think those are the announcements we wanted to make. We'll say thank you, everyone, for being here. Good morning, and God bless you.